This week, episode 262 of Stogie Geeks. I'm your host, Joe Hozempa, joined in studio, co-host Joe D. We interview Enrique Sejas of Matilda Cigars. In the Stogie Geeks section, we are going to talk about the differences between bourbon, rye, and Tennessee whiskey. Got some information that you might need and i'm gonna and always there's a story as to why i'm doing this you gotta hear the story it's gonna be classic and the sticks of the week we're gonna let you know what we've been smoking right here on the stogie geek show this is a security weekly production Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Hat tip, can we play the... Yeah, one more time. Can I hear a... Yes! Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the dirt. Guests and friends here in studio, including a regular cast of characters, Mr. Joe Hollywood to my right. How are you? That's awesome. Joe D's here. Rain Man's here. Happy What's going be, on, I love Joe these D? Table discussions. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Stogie Geek Show. This is episode 262. I'm your host this week, Joe Hozempa. Awesome to sit in the hot seat. I love it. Helping me out navigating through the crazy industry that we are passionately digging so much. Better believe it, man. That's the cigar <laughs> industry. Sometimes we talk a little bit more about cigars here on the show. I can't help it. Maybe it's my ADD. I don't know. It's a good time. How you doing, Joe? Good, man. Happy yeah. to be here. Everything's good? Uh, oh, Everything's yeah. good. It is. Okay. We're going to introduce the host, yeah. and then you're going to talk to us about this awesome stick that we're trying. One of my favorites. Uh, I've actually never had it in this size. I've had it in, in I think, the Robusto size. Nice. And I believe uh, Enrique is smoking the same size as well. So. Oh, I like it. Uh, See? We're, we're, yep. Hey. hey it, it, <laughs> it's, it's a great universe when everything's all on nice. the same page. Joe, today we get to interview Enrique Sejas of Matilda Cigars. Good, uh, good dude in the industry. Known for a couple of years now, and uh, I love his sticks, man. So yes, it's gonna translate well. Yes, uh, who is no stranger to the cigar industry, Enrique? How are you, sir? I'm doing fine. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I, I love the sign behind you. Can you just move for two seconds? Oh, look at that, Story Geeks listeners. There it is. <laughs> That's awesome. That's. <laughs> a- <laughs> I like. It. I I love person who gets create gets creative. And has fun on the set. It's going to be a great interview. Nice. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But before uh, we get to everything about Matilda Cigars, Joe D, tell the listeners what we're smoking at home. One of my uh, one of my personal favorite sticks right here is Serena by uh, Matilda, Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper, Dominican binder, Dominican and Nicaraguan filler, uh, mild to medium in strength. We're smoking the 5.5 by 44 Corona. Uh, I love this particular size. And... Uh, Creamy is, creamy is all hell. I, I get breakfast toast whenever I smoke this cigar. I, it's, uh, it's a treat. Yes. Great breakfast cigar. It, yeah, is, it is awesome. I got, I got coffee, mm-hmm. and I got some bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you mix them in together? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little eccentric as is, you know? I don't, <laughs> <laughs> so, Enrique, um, tell us about... Well, first of all, have you ever been, from my tenure, have you ever been on the Stogie Geek show? I've never had the opportunity to, to interview you. Have you ever been on Stogie Geek? I have been to the Stogie Geek show, uh, I would say, about three years back. Three years back. All right, yeah. right. Okay, so um, it's been a while. Welcome back. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Yes. Uh, thank you uh, for the opportunity to interview you. Uh, it's, it's, it's a privilege and, and definitely an honor to do that and both the two Joes want to thank Paul for the opportunity to uh, co-host the show for sure as as well here on Stogie Geeks we're here every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time you want to tune in on stogiegeeks.com or Facebook or YouTube or whatever your social media preferences uh, there as well yep Joe let's fire let's fire some you questions got them all. let's fire some questions at him first of all I, I just want to note the uh the nice clean website you guys have and uh easy to navigate through and uh give us the uh, the full description of the, the history the blends on you know on uh, on all four of the cigars and 
uh, all four of the guys, there isn't a dog in the game. You, you get four legit winners there, and uh, they come it, man. Yep, top to bottom, a little little something for everybody in there. Very uh, very enjoyable. Yes. Yeah. Um, how did you get to that point of where you are with Matilda Sagaz? And, the, and, and, and let's talk about your family history for, uh, for the Stoic Geeks listeners at home who have not heard of the blend yet or who have not been introduced to the blend yet. Okay, so how Matilda originates uh, initially uh, is from my uh, father's retirement. My dad started in the industry, uh, name is Jose Sejas. He started the industry in 1974 and uh, worked until he built his way up to being the VP in operations and uh, master blender for uh, Tabacalera de Garcia, which is uh, Autodesk's manufacturing facility in the Dominican Republic. He retires in the end of 2011 and about eight months of golfing, he decided he wanted to come back into the industry. Um, for different reasons. It was basically, he wasn't ready to leave the industry. Uh, he wanted to leave a legacy for us. I was working with him at the time. And uh, he wanted to blend cigars on his own way. Blending cigars on his own way means uh, being able to source his own tobacco, having the final, like 100% final say on the blend and on the manufacturing. So that's how Matilde originated. Our project started about 2012 and we released our uh, first cigar in 2014, which was uh, Matilde Renacer, this one right here. It's got uh, the brown label. Mm -hmm. We're actually fortunate enough to be uh, rated and uh, being picked to one of the top 25 that year in the Cigar Aficionado. The idea of the first line, Matilde Renacer, was uh, creating a cigar that wasn't overpowering, was noble to the palate, has a lot of flavor. All day cigar. You can smoke it in the morning because it's not super strong, but it has enough flavor. You can smoke after uh, you smoke two or three cigars after a big meal. It can still give you a lot. Those so it's very and, rich in flavor. Those earth and coffee notes really pop on that cigar, man. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's got great earth and coffee notes, nice little dark chocolate, uh, chocolate uh, bitterness. And, uh, well, it's just a great cigar all around. We created a four sizes, we got a Corona, a Robusto, Toro Bravo, and Grande. And uh, that year, 2015, my dad, uh, it was his 40th year in the industry. So we decided to do a Lancero, 40 ring gauge Lancero and a 40 box count. It was limited to about 625 boxes. I got three left, which I'm never going to sell. I'm just going to smoke them. And uh, then whatever's out there is out there. After uh, the Renacer, we uh, wanted to do a little, something a little bit stronger. And that's how Matilde Oscura comes along. Mm -hmm. Matilde Oscura is the cigar <clears throat> with uh, the green band. Yep. It's a San Andrean wrapper as an Ecuadorian Sumatran binder. Uh, it's got Pennsylvanian filler, which gives it a lot of the strength. And we round that strength up with a uh, little bit of Dominican and Nicaraguan. Starts with nice little pepper notes and then smoothens out to nice natural sweetness. Not an overpowering cigar, it's a medium plus bodied smoke, just with a lot of flavor and a lot of rich character. One of the things that we try to do with all our blends is instead of blending towards strength, we try to make sure the cigars balance. So you always get more flavor than the strength, so you can always enjoy the cigar. At the end of the day, that's what you want to do, right? Third blend is our only box press line in Matilde. It's is Matilde Cuadrata. It's got an H2000 seed uh, Ecuadorian wrapper, a uh, Dominican Olor binder, and a combination of Dominican and Nicaraguan. It's, once again, a medium-plus-bodied cigar, not overpowering, very rich tobacco flavors, uh, nice uh, charred flavors, nice sweetness, not overly sweet, but just nice and balanced. It comes in three sizes, Robusto, Toro Bravo, and Torpedo, and as I said, it's our only box press line. And our final cigar, once you have a medium-bodied cigar, two medium-plus-bodied cigars, uh, we wanted to do a cigar that uh, hit a lot more palates, and that's how Matilde Serena comes along. The idea behind this cigar was having a Connecticut smoke, having a mild to medium cigar, but uh, with character. When I say character, it's a cigar that doesn't have a lot of strength, but still has a lot of flavor. So somebody that's never smoked a cigar or usually smokes mild cigars can enjoy it, but also somebody like me or you guys that smoke uh, medium, medium plus body cigars can still enjoy it as a morning cigar or nightcap. It's a very creamy cigar, a little bit of sweetness to it, very clean smoke. It's a great, uh, actually, nightcap cigar. Sometimes, you know, 
You want to smoke a cigar before you go to sleep. You don't get that aftertaste in your palate. You just want flavor. Uh, it's a great cigar for that. Very worth noting. It's it, very clean on the, uh, the palate. Nice finish. Well, I mean, when, when I first was introduced to your line of cigars, when I first get introduced to a uh, blend or a brand, um, I think that the consumer, if they give it much thought, they come up with a kind of notation of of whatever that company is, right? Yeah. So this is coming from me. So the views expressed in this opinion do not reflect Stoy Geeks' management and or its staff. This is coming from me, right? <laughs> Enrique, I got to make sure, you know, all the bases are covered That's here, it. right? It's a big operation yeah. here, right? Um, when I think of Matilda Cigars, I think of a relaxed brand, Okay, so yep. if I were to name other cigar companies, I would have different adjectives that I would use, right? Yep. But I think of a relaxed brand. And what I mean by that is that um, the, the craft of all of the blends seem to really have their positioning point mm -hmm. within to suit a bunch of different palettes, right. okay? And then I also think of when you peel it back with, with you know, the blends you you're you're not mass producing a bunch of other different sticks you know you, you're kind of um am i correct with that assumption or is that not what you were going for <laughs> no we are uh i would say we call the brand is relax is a good way to put it uh we do have the blends uh as i said we blend towards a lot of balance and flavor mm -hmm. so the idea is having our blends hitting a lot of palettes you like uh, something Habano, you have an Habano medium, you have uh, another Habano medium plus, you have your Maduro, which is a little bit stronger, and you have, uh, as you said, something for every palate. Right. We like to, uh, I like to call it also accessible. When I say accessible, it's in uh, many ways. Uh, branding is very uh, clean. Mm -hmm. You recognize the logo. All the bands are the same. What's going to change is going to be the color. So once you like a Matilde, you know where to find a Matilde. Mm -hmm. All the boxes are the same and the packaging is stands out basically you have your blue box your orange box your green box and uh your brown box right those stand out accessible that way blend wise strength wise none of them are overpowering so yeah i would say relax is a good uh adjective for uh matilde um as a when we've gotten to the stogies of the week section uh for the sticks that we've had uh, often when I'm talking about your blends, I often say that this is a cigar and, and you can check on back episodes. Yep. This is a cigar that you need to smoke slow and you, you need to take your time with to, because if you don't, you're really going to miss all of the little nuances that are in each stick. I could piggyback that with the, uh, you know, the four blends is a little something for everybody, but I feel within each stick there's a uh, a beautiful transition of flavor and uh, uh, you know it, nice nice uh, ride and enjoyment through each one. So yeah, you want to take that time. Yeah, there there real there there really is a, a, a like I said, if you smoke it slow, I have to smoke it slow. Where to really try to pay attention to the actual nuances with that. Mm -hmm. uh, two quick questions I have: um, the logo, right? The logo tends to be the same, and, and I get the, the, the branding component, but other, is, is there any um, methodology to the color scheme? And then my second question is, can you take us through the actual logo? Can I see yours? I always peel mine, yep. right? So can you take us through, because, you know, if, if, you, look at the, at, if, you, if you look at it right quick, it just seems to have a, a leafed S, correct? Yes. Yes, so can yes. you take us through... Can you take us through that? And then uh, was there any rationality with, with the colors or, you know, because the colors stand out as well. Oh, they pop. Yeah. And there's another brand out there that was pretty new that I said that the colors stand out. That would be the uh, Sereno line where the, mm -hmm. you know, when, so, you know, when I go into a local tobacconist shop and I look at them, I, you know, I can immediately pick out your sticks and his sticks right on the shelf, even if it's a, 100 facing humidor or if it's a 600 facing humidor so was there any methodology in that 
Well, one of the ideas was having the colors to stand out. Initially, when we started Matilde, we had the brown color and it did not stand out that much. So when we were uh, originally, what was going to change in the uh, on the logo, it was not going to be the color, but it was going to be the foil. So you're going to have a gold foil, a bronze foil, a silver foil. And uh, when we first did the first Matilde, we figured that uh, because it was a small cabinet bo box, it didn't stand out that much. So we decided to, instead of changing the foils, to change the colors. What we're looking for were relaxed colors. It were fall colors, colors that weren't used in the industry, but also colors that would pop out with the actual wrapper. The green pops out with that uh, dark wrapper. Your orange is going to pop out. And when you put them together, they'll just stand out all together at the same time. Mm -hmm. It was nice uniformity. But, yeah. Yeah, the idea was having a... Uh, Fall colors, I would say, uh, colors that would stand out in a humidor, colors that weren't used at the time. They're all, you'll see they're all uh, pastel colors, nice pastel colors. Uh, the only one that's not pastel would be the one we're smoking, which is the Serena. Mm -hmm. Because there wasn't any pastel color that would help the cigar stand out simply because uh, Connecticut uh, leaf is already kind of off. So we wanted something that would be a little bit brighter. That's when we went with the aqua mm -hmm. on that cigar. Yeah, absolutely. Now take us through the S. <laughs> the S. Well, the the, the leaf story. S. <laughs> Excuse me. Funny story. Okay, great. Let's so, start with the. Uh, I want to hear it. <laughs> so how Matilda originates? I said uh, my dad retired from uh, his only job. It's been my dad's only job. Started when he was uh, twenty-two years old, and just went up until he retired. When we started, uh, decided to do our own line. A, we wanted to use our uh, name, but we couldn't because there's a Seja's signature cigar, which is owned by Altadis. And the trademark, we don't own it. We couldn't use it. So we thought it was going to be, be a great idea to revive something that was Dominican. 60% of the tobaccos that we use are Dominicans. I mean, we were born and raised in Dominican Republic. Our cigars are manufactured in Dominican Republic. So we decided to have a historian look at different uh, brands that are Dominican, but weren't existing anymore. And we came along Matilde. Matilde was originally founded by a man called Simeo Mencias in 1876. The original logo for Matilde was a house, but the seal of warranty for the logo had an S and then an M. Mm -hmm. So the S represents two things. First of all, Sejas. It's our last name. It's our pride. And we wanted to put it in the cigar in some way even though we couldn't use Sejas in the cigar, and also representing Simeon Mencia, which was the uh, original founder of Matilde. When I say it was an old brand, brand started 1876, died in 1913, it wasn't an ongoing brand, and we decided to revive it to revive something that was Dominican. That's the reason our first cigar, which is uh, the Renacer, Renacer's Rebirth. Mm -hmm. It's a rebirth of this brand and also the rebirth of, uh, I would say my dad, I mean, this guy came from blending cigars like Monte Cristo, eh, Romeo Julieta, you know, working with millions of dollars worth of tobacco, eh, making, you know, millions of cigars to working with a lot less tobacco, being able to choose his own tobacco and uh, manufacturing 250,000 cigars in a year. I mean, when you go from a company where you have 4,000 employees to a company where you have, you know, 25, 30 employees, mm. it's a huge change. Absolutely. It's like a new birth. And, uh, and that's where it comes from. And that's where our logo comes from. It's a little bit of us, a little bit of the old brand. And uh, instead of having the M, we put the... Uh, actually, we noticed it's a naked lady in the middle. It's covered by the S. So the butt is covered by the S. On, and it's see. basically yeah. Matilde. They want to represent Matilde as a Dominican woman. Um, oh, yeah. When we started doing working with the logo, uh, the woman was a lot... Uh, thinner, more model-like, and we were telling the designer, no, 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 we want a voluptuous woman, because it's a Dominican woman, Dominican women are voluptuous and beautiful. Yeah, and uh, I like it. <laughs> what ended up happening is that my, uh, my brother sent a picture of his wife, we want her voluptuous like this, and that's how we came, uh, the final uh, Matilde, so I guess she's modeled after my brother's wife. There you go. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Ricardo, what is, uh, what is his place in the, uh, the company, and uh, you're more, you know, uh, more on the forefront, and no, but we don't. You don't seem to hear about uh, Ricardo as much. I'm just curious where he's at. 
Though my brother is no longer working with us in the company. Uh, originally, my brother is a uh, diplomat. He started uh, working in the uh, embassy in Paris for Dominican Republic. Once we started the project, he uh, came down, took a leave of absence from the embassy to help us uh, set everything up. He worked with us for about two years doing the manufacturing. But uh, once we moved to Santiago to manufacture with uh, Tabacalera Palma, uh, Hochi Blanco, he went back and working on his uh, original job, which was diplomatic services. So now he's in Holland. He's uh, in Holland with his wife. He lives in Den Haag, working in the embassy. Smokes cigars, helps me out in Europe, but uh, he's not active in the company anymore. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the current goals that you're trying to work on right now? And what can we expect coming up, uh, you know, 2018, 2019? Non-FDA. We're not... <laughs> Oh, FDA. Yeah, uh, well, we're, 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 you know, I, I always ask a question. I say, just leave FDA out of it, we're, you know, because we can be here for another two hours, and at the end, yeah. we, we'd be two sticks FDA down, right and here. then, excuse me? This right here? Yeah, yeah. Got to put FDA right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, absolutely. So, so no, anyways, so uh, we do have different projects uh, working along. Uh, we're, I'm working on a new set of lines of Matilde not going to come out this year, maybe next year. Mm -hmm. uh, we take a lot of time where we're working on the blends and the branding and everything. As you've noticed, we've been out for, uh, we've been out for four years now. We only have four blends. We believe in our four blends and we push them uh, very thoroughly. And uh, I think the blends have a lot to grow in. There's a, still a lot of market to cover. Mm -hmm. Having said that, we're always working on new blends, uh, new branding, and it's an ongoing process. But oh, yeah. it has to be something beautiful before we bring it out. Yeah. See, uh, that, um, that's one thing I, I that I, I you know I would just want to pause and and admire because when you start a cigar company, you 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 or 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 any company, it doesn't have to be within the cigar industry. You have to make a decision as whether you're going far or wide. Right. You know what I mean? If you're gonna just produce 15, 20 lines of something and crank them out and you know go there or if you just want to stay close to your core, close to what it is that, that you do, and do it very well and focus on that. Yep. You know? And that's what we've been doing. Yeah. I mean, we've created uh, medium, medium plus bodied cigars, accessible cigars, price point, flavor, profiles. As you said, they're relaxed but not boring. They're very complex cigars. They have a lot of characteristics you can enjoy. Mm -hmm. So they're blends that we stand behind. And because we're blessed that we stand behind, we keep on pushing them, and we're not uh, running into bringing out new stuff. We're always working on new stuff. You never stop working. But uh, we still believe that we can you know, push these blends a little bit more before we come out with something new. But we are working with different uh, things for the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. One of the cool things that uh, actually just happened today um, Unfortunately, we didn't have our cigar distributed in Dominican Republic for uh, various reasons. We only had the Renacer. And just today, we started our distribution in, uh, in the Dominican Republic, which uh, is something that uh, my dad's always been pushing for us uh, to do. But for logistical reasons, we weren't doing. We wanted our cigars to be priced correctly. And in order to be priced correctly, you had to do the distribution yourselves. Because unfortunately, because of our tax structures, if we go through a distributor, our cigars would be about 20% more expensive than they are in the Dominican Republic. And uh, we believe that with Dominican cigars, they shouldn't be more expensive. So it took us a while to get them out there. But uh, just today, we finalized uh, bringing our first shipment of the Matilda cigars to Dominican Republic. And this week, we're going to start doing that, which is one of my goals for uh, this year, mm -hmm. to have them accessible in the Dominican Republic. Right. Nice, congrats. Right. Yeah, that, uh, you know, it's... Uh, I'm sure you have a wish list as to where you want to be and where you want the company to be, but it also stands to mind that you have a lot of patience, it seems. You know, you, you come across, you know, a business person who has a lot of patience. You're not trying to just push the stick, throw the stick in any shop. You want to make sure that it's a good fit and that people have an option that they can enjoy, you know? Yeah, but, of course. Yeah. I mean, our shops are our partners. Our shops, our distributors are our partners. Uh, they're not, uh, we don't 
look at them. They are customers, obviously, but they're our partners. And we worked as directly and as close as possible with, uh, with our different partners to make the brand stand out at their shop, uh, help them out to move them around. We're a small brand. Uh, we don't have a huge marketing budget, but we have a close relationship with the people we work with. And uh, we put our money with our partners. Mm -hmm. So we push, we work, uh, work together with the shops. We take it easy. Uh, I believe in organic growth. So as you keep on growing steadily, it's a lot better than growing extremely fast and then falling quickly, uh, very quickly. So our always business model has always been do it slowly, do it correctly. I mean, we want a brand that's going to sell for 100 years, not a brand that's going to sell for 10 years and then die. Right. And in order to do that, you have to be patient. You have to do it slowly. You can't rush it. You can't, uh, you know, crank out production. You can't open a thousand stores at the same time because you won't be able to handle a thousand stores at the same time. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to talk to a thousand stores at the same time or see, you know, all the customers at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we try to do it in a way where we're able to keep in touch with everybody, where we could talk to everybody. We're able to, I'm able to travel to, you know, visit my customers at least once a year. Uh, I do a lot of traveling just to visit the customers and uh, do events and pushing events like everybody does, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you have too many stores, you won't be able to do it with everybody. And we try to, you know, try to visit everybody at least once. Right. Which so is pretty hard. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I'm, it, it is. It is. Uh, sort of a personal question. Does that drive you crazy, though, being that patient? Because like you said before, you know, you, 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 before you've had a bigger factory, a different business model. Now you're down to, what was it, 20, 25 employees, right? Or 20, 25 workers, smaller, really concentrating on the actual quality and stuff like that, which, which it's, it's a testament to all Total of the, yeah. to, to, it, it's just a testament to the sticks, you know? Um, does that drive you personally nuts or, or are you, in general, a really patient person to, to get that accomplished? No, I've always been a patient person is the... Obviously, there's sometimes that uh, you want to grow quicker, but uh, it doesn't drive me crazy. I mean, it, it, what it does, it brings a lot more pride to what we do. It's, I mean, Matilde is, uh, for my dad, it's his pride and joy. For me, it's my pride. It's something that I love doing. It's uh, my future. It's our family's uh, legacy. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't drive me crazy. It just fills me with happiness seeing it growing and uh you got to be patient. There's no way. I, I believe there's no other way to do it, uh, honestly. You just be patient, work with it. I actually enjoy it a lot more because you, I guess you get to build relationships a lot better mm -hmm. when you're patient and grow slowly than uh, we're just growing extremely quickly and inorganically. Yeah. At and least now, every time I get to meet you guys, I'll get to talk to you guys more often. I get to meet uh, I meet a new store. I can actually talk to them personally. We can have people in the office call them personally. So it has that personal feel. And uh, if you don't do it the way, I guess the way we're doing a little bit slower and organically, a lot of that personal touch uh, gets lost. Gets lost in translation, well, gets lost in the sales and the growth. Right. But I also think that if you don't do it that way, a lot of it gets lost in the product. So, steady wins so, the race so, every time. so, you know, th there have been uh, a bunch of different companies that produce product and well-known companies that it, it just seemed rushed. Right. And when you take the time to get into the blends that Enrique produces, you, you, you really, uh, to me, you know, without even meeting you, um, you know, it, it, that's the impression that that I get from the stick. So, so, so longevity, man. That, right, you know. right. And and then you know other blends uh, and brands go out, and you can tell that the, the it, it was it was pushed. Right, it was too pushed tobacco too wise. Yep. You know, it was it was you know it, it, it all it all reminds me back to uh, an episode that we had with Man, Manuel and Noah, yep. where he said that you know if you smoke a cigar and you feel like a tightness in here from on your palate. He simply said, "Tobacco's not ready." Right. You yep. know, and, and 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 there are a lot of cigars that that the tobacco's not ready. I mean, you know, so yeah. I mean, you, you gotta have your your tobacco has to be aged. You gotta give time for your cigars when you manufacture your blend has to be correct. There's so many factors that goes into it, 
And uh, and keep in mind, it's a human process. It's handmade. From, mm. You know, from the moment the seeds put down in the soils to the moment uh, you're packing it. So there's there's mistakes, and that way you have to be even more patient. You have to have more time. You got to make sure the blend's correct. The blend's going to age correctly before uh, you put it out there. Right. Bob, you, sure. You have a question? Oh, I got a bunch. I, I just want to worth uh, worth noting as well. Uh, your father had the mantra of hiring only legit cigar smokers, uh, you know, as the rollers. And there's something to be said for that too, guys that guys that get it and legitimately enjoy the product. And uh, uh, worth noting, you know, if you could speak on that a little bit as well. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, um, you can tell somebody a million times that a cigar's too tight, that the cigar's bitter, that uh, you got to do it this way, you got to do it that way. If the person is not a cigar smoker, he's never enjoyed a cigar in his life, he's never tried a cigar in his life, he's going to have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> because right. he's simply not experiencing it. So he's like, ah, oh, yeah, it's too tight, it doesn't really matter. Or it's too loose, it doesn't really matter. Or it's bitter, it doesn't really matter. When somebody smokes a cigar and says, oh, coño, this is what, ha- this is what happens when it's too tight. You know, it bitters up. Oh, this is what happens when it's too loose, so, you know, turn off. And they'll be able to understand it a lot more so they'll put a lot more passion be- behind it and they'll put a lot more care behind it because they understand the product from a consumer when, uh, standpoint we appreciate that it's from experience yeah yeah when we started the the manufacturing facility in la romana before uh, we moved to santiago it was uh it had two um two goals manufacture our cigars and education we had a tour and we had about fifty thousand people going through that tour a year we had what I like to call uh, well, tour buses. It's people just came in. It's part of the culture of Dominican Republic. We are a cigar country. So just people want to see a cigar manufacturing. And then you had cigar aficionados coming in. You know, let's say you or, uh, or whoever came in and called us up. He's like, oh, we're interested in seeing the manufacturing side. Uh, we never, you know, I'm a cigar smoker. I love it, but I've never seen manufacturing. And we would set up a tour for uh, these guys, but it was a tour that uh, my brother would do or my dad would do or I would do because we wanted to get into details with these guys. So we had a 30-minute tour, and then we had a 45-minute to two, two-and-a-half-hour tour. If we were blending that day, you sit down and blend with us. If uh, you know Whatever we were doing, you'd do it with us after we do the tour. And we had uh, reactions. For me, it was two reactions. Every cigar smoker travels with people that are not cigar smokers, that don't understand cigars. And these guys that were not cigar smokers came out understanding what cigar manufacturing is. It's an art form. It's not mass. It's not industrialized. So they say, Cunha, I, I get it. This is not, it's tobacco, but it's not cigarettes. It's not machine made. This is actually an art form. It's, it's beautiful. There's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of human love that goes into it. And then you got the cigar smokers that had never seen the manufacturing. and they went along and saying, Coño, these cigars should be a lot more expensive. I never knew how much went into manufacturing a single stick. They should be more expensive. You may read about it and you may smoke them, but sometimes you say, oh, no, it's a little bit expensive, $10, 12 $15, you know, whatever. Once you see it, once you have experienced it, you understand it. Different appreciation. Because you're there. Level. You appreciate it. So when you have a cigar buncher or a cigar roller, you can tell them as much time as you want, oh, yeah, you got to do this this way, this way, this way. He won't appreciate it until he, he smokes and he understands it. It's the same concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Nice, no, son. The, uh, on the website there, you know, I, I counted you know, uh, about uh, 30 or so states that are covered in the U.S. right now. I want to ask about uh, market penetration moving forward, where the – where you feel the uh, the strongholds are mm. right now, and then uh, you know what direction uh, you guys you know you're gonna uh, channel some of those efforts moving forward as well. Yeah, quick programming note, boy, am I rubbing off on you? <laughs> <laughs> that was my next question. All right, <laughs> boy, am I? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> well done. So, um, as you said, we're in uh, 30 states in the the country. We focus a lot in, uh, we do our 80-20 states. We do a lot in the Northeast. Actually, our territory in the New England area is pretty good territory. A lot in Texas, a lot in uh, Arizona, and the Southwest and Colorado areas. 
So what we try to do, as I said, we're a small uh, company and we try to focus and uh, grow the brands where uh, they're doing the best. So let's say in a year, I tra I'll travel two or three times to a territory that I'm doing very well at to solidify that brand there before I go to any other territory. And that's the way we work it out. And that's the way we, uh, we choose our traveling and our actually brand building. Noted uh, Alabama in particular for uh, soon to be a, a little bit of a hotbed down there for uh, Matilde as well. Yeah, we've been doing well. We've been doing well. Yeah, Alabama, Texas, Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Very big hot spots for um, smaller cigar companies to really get into that market penetration right now. It's very, I think it's very uh, eh, southern, very uh, warm, very relationship based. It's something I've noticed uh, when traveling in the States, you got some territories where there's always a relationship in cigars, but some territories are a lot more relationship based and a lot more oh come visit. You know, they appreciate a visit more than uh, than other places. And I would say uh, Texas, I was just there uh, a couple of months ago, like actually January. I'll be back uh, in uh, March. It's one of the states that uh, I enjoy going because it's very relationship based and you create a lot of relationships over there. Same thing as in Alabama and uh, southern states uh, usually tend to be very uh Oh, comfort, relationship. Maybe you more know? of a uh, relaxed atmosphere to appreciate a relaxed. nice, uh, relaxed brand like uh, yourself. I, I was also curious about the, uh, you guys seem to have a pretty strong online presence as well. Uh, that's worth noting. So, mm -hmm. so how do you couple that moving forward with the uh, the brick and mortar versus the, versus the online, just attacking on all fronts and... Uh, and see where it goes. No, with the online presence, we've we've had our lines. All our cigars are on. Have an online presence. We uh, price protect them, and uh, we actually monitor it uh, pretty often. And we put all our marketing focuses on our brick and mortars. There are partners. I mean, our online presence. You have to be there. It's something that uh, you do. We there are partners as well. But when it comes to the marketing and the traveling, we try to support the brick and mortars as much as we can. But yeah, you can find our cigars online anywhere. Nice. Other than patience, because you seem to do that so well, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned within the industry so far? Hmm. If now, this would be the time we cut to a commercial break, but no, I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> no, other than patience, because obviously, you know, let, let's take some time to talk about that. You know, you, you, Here's you've already expressed that that's important to you, but there might be some other aspects that the Stogie Geeks listener wants to know about the brand, you know, what, 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 what lesson have, have you learned? Here's something I've, uh, I've learned is that when we started out, we started with one blend mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was an all around blend, but you figure it out. There's palettes for everybody. So if I were to do it, everything, we were to do everything all over again, instead of coming out with one only blend, we come out with two or three blends mm -hmm. initially and build them out that way because you get a lot more presence, you get a lot more palettes. Mm -hmm. este, we've always been in the manufacturing side of the industry. So our wholesale and uh, retail operations, like retail and wholesaling, like visiting retailers uh, and working with wholesalers is 100% uh, new for us. It's a new venture. My dad's always been in, uh, in the kitchen, you know? Mm -hmm. He's always been the chef. He's always cooked. We never put it out there. And... Uh, Honestly, it's a it's a tough job. I mean, it's great. It's awesome. Traveling is a great time. Is the but building the brand is I would say is a lot harder than uh, than people think it is. I mean, it's a lot of work. It's enjoyable work, and uh, it's a lot of relationships. Mm -hmm. I've learned patience. You have to work with the right tobacco. Don't rush it, and uh, and be true to what you say. I mean, don't. Uh, Industry word travels a lot and travels very quickly. So yeah, it does. <laughs> keep true and uh, don't bullshit. Just be, you know, be who you are and work with the people that you. It's not faithful. Eh? Yeah. Right. What's that word? What's what? Can you repeat that again? It's not faithful. It's just be a, uh, you know, be part of a family, man. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's creating a big family, and it takes a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, but what I've learned is, yeah. Maybe maybe the word you're looking just... for is loyalty. Maybe. 
loyalty. Yeah, yeah, that's what maybe, I'm maybe, for. maybe, maybe yeah. what you're looking for is 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 loyalty. I mean, you know, uh, uh, you know, outside of Stogie Geeks, I have my own business, branding and positioning companies and stuff like that. And you know, I always talk about that. You know, when you're building a brand, you you got to get your customers excited about your your product, and you got to get excited about basically who you are and why you exist. You know, mm -hmm. so. With that being said, you know, it, it works better when the brick and mortars support you and it works better when, you know, they get behind the product. And but mm -hmm. lucky for you, or I shouldn't say lucky, you've positioned such quality sticks that you've seemed not to rush out into the marketplace where I think that uh, any smart business owner would pick up on that and say, wow, this is a brand that I want to get behind. Staying true to yourself, stay, you know, within, uh, you know, within yourself, certainly, and, uh, you know, march out, uh, you know, at a, you know, at a pace that uh, is advantageous moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. I guess keep within your parameters. I mean, accessible price point, accessible palette wise, accessible, uh, even for the retailer, what we try to do is uh, choose a uh, top selling, instead of having like 15 facings per uh, line, mm -hmm. we chose four facings. Sure. All our lines have a Corona, a Robusto, Toro Bravo, and Grande, which is your top selling cigars. So we thought about, you know, thought about the retailers, thought about the consumer and the palate wise, price point wise as well. All of our cigars are under ten dollars. They're from the seven fifty to uh, ten dollar price point. So accessible in that point, and just uh, stick to your business model. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody does. Everybody, every. I mean, you'll see it in the industry. Everybody, every single brand owner does something differently. And if you start looking at whatever, whoever else is doing it, and you don't focus on what you believe in, what you're doing, it's just everything's going to go to shit. Right. So. Right. I have one more know, question. But, that's your model. Well, but I'll end that. Do, do you that. have one more? Okay. I do. Uh, Enrique, uh, you guys opted not to showcase the uh, Serena at the 2016 IPCPR. Um, came out with uh, 10 or so stores across the country initially. I was wondering if you could just touch on that. And also... The uh, the Seha signature, where can I, where can we uh, we find that? It seems like one of those uh, elusive uh, elusive gems you want to chase down. <laughs> um, with the Serena, what uh, as I said, we come out with a blend every year. That year we came out with the Quadrato, which is our original our real release for that year, and then the Serena, which was like a soft release. And it was a way to I would say say thank you to one of our you know a couple of our you know top retailers saying okay well you know we come out with this blend we had a limited production of that blend at the time and uh, we brought it out so they can enjoy or you know test that blend and sell that blend a little bit uh, before everybody else got it so these guys got it for about I believe it was six to seven months before we started distributing it. Uh, well, nationwide. Right. That was the idea behind, uh, well, staggering that release. Solid. Where can we get it? Well, uh, oh, you can get it. Oh, say his signature. Yes. That so, was gonna, yeah, that was going to happen. Even though it has our last name, even though it was a blend that was created by my father and it was a blend... It was, it was called the Seiya Signature because at that time it was a blend that my dad did for himself and it was what it was. I wouldn't be able to answer that question because it's not our line, it's not our brand, it's uh, Alters' brand. Okay. It's that to my understanding, and I don't know if I am 100% correct, there, it's not being distributed anymore, unfortunately, because it's a great blend. But I wouldn't be able to tell you, you can find it in this place, that place, that place, because I don't have that information. The hunt begins. Fair point. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the hunt begins. I, I have a, a, a final question. When, when you've come out with your blends, did, did, did you blend them originally for a particular size intended? And does that switch throughout the course of your other blends? Or, you know, because obviously you have to produce different sizes, so you cater to a, a different target audience. You produce them all uh, within the same size available within all of, of, of the different blends, but were they blended originally to um, fit for a specific size? We start with Robustos. Okay. We start blending, uh, our blending starts with Robustos and then we'll, we'll figure it out up in, uh, you know, to the smaller ring gauges and the larger ring gauges. Mm -hmm. But it's your, uh, we have a 44, 54, 
50 and 60. So that 50 is like your middle ground. So you'll be able to notice a little bit of, uh, of both sides. So we start with the Robusto, we start playing towards the Robusto, and then after that we expand it to uh, the rest of the lines. Mm -hmm. What you were saying is true. Some blends work better in, uh, in different sizes. For example, for me, the, uh, the Renacera, I love in the Corona. The Serena, I love in the Robusto. Your uh, Oscura, I think it works great with the Toro Bravo. And your uh, Cuadrata, I think it works great with the Torpedo. Mm. So blends work differently, See? and they, uh, and I mean, they'll build up differently in different sizes. But we always start blending with the Rebu, so that's sort of like our go-to uh, size for uh, for blending. I'm pretty excited that you said that because three of the four, I would have passed the test. Right. <laughs> there so you go. I got a 75, right? Nice. <laughs> what, were, what, what were the three? What were the three? Um, the Esquerda. Uh, th this one that was smoking now, the Serena, I was way off. Yep. I, I'm I'm digging this the the smaller size. I did like the Rebu, so yep. haven't had it in this size. Um, I, I, I'm really digging this size for sure. My favorite size, yeah. You know, I, for sure. But even even on when I've done the Stoey Geeks re reviews, I always put in bold the available sizes and then in bold are the, are the ones that I've actually tried and then all the ones that I actually like. And then when I do the format of the stick that I'm officially reviewing and giving a rating, I usually put the format of the one that I like and, you know. Okay. You know, for, so for sure. Your favorite one? My favorite one, um, the Escura, for sure. The Escura? Yeah, yeah, definitely is, is my favorite one. And, and actually, the, and, and maybe for my experience with your brand is because that was the one, the first one that I originally started to smoke slow, okay? Because here on Story Geeks, we have a, a, a plethora of sticks that we have to review and prepare for not only web content on our website but we have to prepare for show dictation content and you know here we are and you know sometimes uh, i i smoke it and i'm like i like it but i'm not too sure let me get back to it you know i like it so i have i probably have a list of, of 20 sticks that are ready to be lined up on deck for review but i haven't really pinned down which size i like or I haven't really, you know, I've only smoked one of that, so I try to smoke at least two or three before I actually give a Stogie Geeks review so I can, you know, not send the cl not send the listener on either a wild goose chase. You know, I, I don't stand there and say, you know, I smoked this, and by the way, you can't get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, because, yeah. you know, and, and so I, I, I try to make sure. You can't get it, but it's this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like, you know, I've enjoyed some, you know, I call them kind of like bootleg sticks. You know, I have, I have a friend in the industry who gives me some stuff that, you know, you, you're going to have to go on a wild goose chase to find. You know what I mean? And so, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to send the Story Geeks listener on right. that, you know, because I've been that guy a couple years back, probably 08, 07, where, you know, I was chasing unicorns and, and, and you know, look what I got. I got, you know, this, and this is the first of, oh, yeah. of the, and it, 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 it's crazy, you know. I wasn't the guy yeah, in the shop that, saying, look what I got, but I was excited for me saying, look, look what I got, you know. <laughs> Enrique, it's... Sounds like you have a tough job, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it can be tough at times, you know. <laughs> Enrique, selfishly, I would love to smoke uh, your four your four blends in a uh, in a Lancero. Any, any uh, plans moving forward on expanding on the uh, the sizes of uh, you know? I know you have the uh, the four current uh, sizes. With the Lanceros, we've done them in the uh, in the Renacer, which was actually uh, commercially available, and we had a uh, couple hundred Lanceros in the Serena made. Oh. For uh, specific uh, people. Specific right people. Now, Do you want our address? <laughs> Gotta get my hands on these guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how, how do I get on the specific people list? Yeah. Right. That could be arranged. Well, actually, what happened was uh, I was traveling, and uh, I tend to make a lot of promises when I'm drunk. Nice. And I usually keep them. And uh, that Serena Lancero came out uh, to a, a friend and a store manager that's saying, oh, I love the Serenas, but I only smoke Lanceros. I wish you were in the Lanceros. And I was drunk enough to say, you know what? Fuck you. I'm going to make those Serenas for you. I'm going to make them in Lanceros. <laughs> and, uh, nice. and shit. That's how, that's how he came along. Nice. He had about 200 Lanceros made. He sent them a couple of bundles. 
and uh, I've been smoking bundles and just handing them out there. Um, but yeah, that's how I came along. Right now, we're not focusing on making uh, Lancero sizes. For a brand like ours, Lanceros, they're great size. They're not a huge seller. It's For a good sure. size to have as a... Uh, you know, as something cool, people for uh for the geeks or Stogie so geeks, you know, right. like a novelty product. But, uh, I gotcha. Yep. A novelty, yes, yep. a novelty. But uh, they don't sell as much, and as they say, we grow slowly, and we try to focus on actually move towards a store. Awesome, awesome. Uh, are you going to IPC IPCPR this year? Yeah, yeah. We yep. always at the IPCPR. Uh, our distributors in uh in the United States are SAG Casada. Okay. So we're always at uh, their booth. Yep. Every year. Uh, can you report back to us after then? Yeah, sure. All right. Course. Awesome. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be all right. I, I'm, I'm holding you to it now. <laughs> Happy to have it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, definitely. Because I, I, the reason why I'm asking is, is I really think that there's going to be a lot of – uh, not only consolidation within the industry, but I think there's going to be a lot of buzz talking about this IPCPI this, this year. year in particular. Yeah. I think I think it's going to yep. be I think it's going to be one of the bigger the one of the bigger years, um, especially with and I said we're not going to talk about it and we're not the FDA and <laughs> the, <laughs> you know uh, but yeah so uh, definitely we'll we'll be in touch with you to to set that up for sure. When's the next time that you're coming down to the Northeast, off the top of your head? When you coming down? I'll let you know. All I'll right. let you know. i got to talk to Brett and uh, organize that. Okay, but great. But usually you come down uh, after spring. Right now it's too cold for me, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, not uh, going down. Not going, no, nowhere that's 45 and it's good at 45 degrees, I'm going to be there. There you go. <laughs> well, we'll see you after April. <laughs> exactly. I'll we'll see, see you after April for sure. Yeah. Let us know. <laughs> Let us know where you're going to be. We'll post it for the Stogie Geeks listeners so the ones that are local can try to catch up with you and, uh, you know, have the opportunity to meet, meet you in person, you know? Oh, it'd be awesome, man. Right, it'd be awesome. awesome. I always like smoking with fellow uh, smokers. Perfect, perfect. Enrique, thank you for your time. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for thank having you. me, guys. Yep, absolutely. When we come back here on the Stogie Geek Show, I have some explaining to do. I'm going to talk to you about the differences between bourbon, rye, and Tennessee whiskey. Stay tuned. <laughs> 